We are Cactus Wrestling. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Welcome back to Cactus Wrestling. Today we're going over the U20 US Open, talking about freestyle. Um, super impressed to see some of these names repeating from the Olympic trials, doubling down, saying, hey, I know that was you know only a few days ago. I'm ready for the next challenge back at freestyle. Um, I'm looking at 57 kilo first. Figured we start at the bottom, work our way up. A um, few guys in this weight I think worth mentioning. Obviously, Luke Lillidall, Jax Forrest, Anthony Knox, um, Nathan Desmond, Seth Mendoza. Those are the big high school names. And uh, from college, you have Max Gallagher, who is a 2024 NCAA qualifier for Penn. Um, if you don't know by now, Luke Lillidall, Jax Forrest, two big names in the freestyle world. Um, Luke is a three-time world medalist. He got a silver at U17 Worlds in 21, a gold at, U at uh, U17 in 22. And then in 2023, he took silver at uh, U20 Worlds. Um, fifth at Senior Nationals. Two and two at the Olympic trials, number one at 126. I think he's looking to run the table this year at U20s. Um, but standing in his way is going to be, in my opinion, Jax Forrest, the number one guy to oppose him. Um, Jax ranked number two at 126. Those high school 126s are just filthy. Um, Jax took second at the world team trials last year for U17. He was a, a, a silver medalist. At Worlds in 27, uh, 2022 at U17, Fargo champ in 23, um, won the last chance qualifier and took fourth at the Olympic trials, making the senior world team this year. Um, and then obviously there's other great guys. You know, Anthony Knox, we touched on a little bit. Best wrestler in the nation at 120. 21, he was a Fargo champ. Uh, you don't think he'll beat Lil Dollar Forest? It's tough because Anthony Knox is a great wrestler in his own right. Um, but I, I think that freestyle is not maybe his dominant style, like we're kind of seeing for Luke Little and Jax Forrest. Uh, that being said, Anthony Knox did wrestle at the, uh, you know, the last chance qualifier. And he, in the same weight class as Luke, had a very similar record, one and two versus two and two. I mean, on paper, he looks like he's there with the senior level guys. Um, and then... Jax you know, Forrest weight class to lose yeah i think that this is i'm gonna lean towards jacks um and obviously people that know me i know i'm a big fan of his uh i think this will be interesting to see luke and jacks meet up again because they've had this kind of rivalry that has been back and forth and i think right now i believe luke is winning it i think he's got an extra matchup on jack but uh it'll be interesting to see some other guys i mean nathan desmond you know, Fargo All American. Penn State recruit. Yeah. And he uh, you know, went four and two at the last chance qualifier, almost made the Olympic trials as well. Do I have um, this list right? I'm looking at flow. It looks like Leo DeLuca is also registered. Yes, Leo DeLuca is registered, I believe, still. Iowa um, commit. Yeah. There were some reports that people said he was going to be out, but I believe he's still in. Um, but again, Leo DeLuca, incredible folk style wrestler. It has a good carryover to freestyle. I just don't think he has the pedigree or the accomplishments so far. To well, kind of I mean, compete. he almost beat uh, Knox at the who's number one. Yeah, and but again, like I, I, you know, I'm not sure how well Anthony Knox will do. I, uh, I think that he's an incredible wrestler. I just don't think freestyle is necessarily his best style. I, I think folk style is probably his best style. And um, when you have some really serious hammers like. Jax and like Luke in there at uh you know 57 kilo, it's gonna make things pretty dang competitive. Um so we'll see how he if he's able to get it done. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Jax Force is is probably the favorite here. Luke Lildahl also impressed last weekend at the Olympic team trials. They're both uh no, sorry, Lildahl's not on the world team. He did not place. Did he not. Marcus Blade. Oh no, yeah, Lildahl only. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he went two and two. Uh, yeah, he only beat uh, the uh, Cronin. Yeah, so I would agree with you. I think this is Jack's Forrest's. I'm just really 
curious as to where he ends up wrestling in college if he decides to do that because this has got to be one of the highest touted yeah. recruits in a long time. Yeah, it, it's I I think Jax is going to end up at Oklahoma State. Um, a lot of people seem to think that his father came out pretty recently and said like, oh, you know, like we're not, it's not a done deal. So like, you know, don't, you know, don't put it. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, that's the classic thing. Like, oh, you know, I don't know where I'm committing yet. Wink, wink. Um, but you know, he, he's a huge Dayton fix fan. Um, and his great- teammate, right. JJ McComas. Yeah, exactly. And his team, you know, so I could, I could see the pipeline there. Um, I could also see him wanting to go, you know, to a different school. But I think when you're at that level that Jax is at, it's only, you know, going to be like six or so schools that really kind of grab your attention. But uh, by, yeah, well, by all accounts, he's also an incredible student. So, you know, this could be a guy pushing for Happy. a Cornell, you know, you know, want that Ivy League. Oh, he's going to go with Knox? Could be. I mean, it could be a good one-two punch at, at a 25, 33 or 33, 41 as they grow. Um, you have the Spartan Wrestling Club for Cornell. They were saying that about DeLuca and Knox. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Um, I don't think he's going to end. I, I think he can end up at Penn State. I just don't think it's super likely. I think that. They got a log jam. I mean, they got so many well, guys. Well, hey, yeah. Mason Gibson uh, cleared up some of that log jam. He did. I was, I had egg on my face for that. I'll tell you. <laughs> I was not. Ex- Mason Gibson video for another time. Um, I just, I don't understand uh, committing originally to Cornell, by all accounts, an incredible school academically. Wrestling, they finished second um, to Penn State. That's awesome. So great wrestling, great academics. Says, you know what? I'm going to go with my brother to Penn State. Penn State, great academic school. Best wrestling school currently. And uh, for whatever reason, he said, you know, I'm, uh, I, I don't want to go there. I'm going to reopen my recruitment. And he committed to Rutgers, which out of those three is the is third for academics, and out of those three is third for wrestling. So I don't understand it. Um, but hey, it's his future. I hope you know he does well wherever he goes. It was just a little bit shocking for me to he, you know I thought he would have gone back to Cornell if I if I you know would have guessed. Oh, uh, it's because Donnie Vincent left. Yeah, he so. he's gonna flip the Buffalo soon. Hey, Hopefully. I hope so. So, um, drop your comment down below on uh, 57 kilos. Um, as we, I mean, any other notes on 57 before jumping up to 61? Uh, I mean, Nathan Desmond, we talked about Seth Mendoza, um, two time Fargo finalist, Fargo champ, uh, two time world team trials finalist at U17. Uh, I think he's going to be in the mix, but I really think this is like a, a one to two horse, you know, a two horse race between Luke and Jax. Yep. Um, and there's some great, a lot of great wrestlers are going to be there at that weight. Um, you know, there's guys like Aiden Smith, uh, Ronnie Ramirez, Aaron Seidel, uh, who are, you know, top five ranked in the nation at their weight class in folk style. I just don't know if they are going to be able to compete with the freestyle component with some of these guys that are, are really good freestyle wrestlers. Yep. Oh. All right. Going up to 61 kilos. Kyler Larkin is the big name here, but JJ McComas is also there and a couple others. It's what's interesting is like, there's a lot of really good guys here, but like their expertise is not freestyle. Uh, you have like Sam Herring, Corey Land, both are returning world team members, um, but they're in Greco. So, like, Kyler Larkin, great wrestler we know, uh, two-time Fargo champ, 2022 world team member. And you he can would, check it out. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. You can yeah. Check. Hell yeah, he does. Um, and even, you know, went two and one at the uh, Yosar Dogo in, um, in, in this year. I mean, this is a guy that's wrestled and won on the – on the senior international stage. I mean, that's crazy. Um, But, you know, you have guys like Sam Herring, who is also part of that Bishop McCourt team that features Bo Bassett, Jax Forrest, Mason Gibson. Um, And funny enough, his last big freestyle match that I remember 
was when he took second at Fargo freestyle to Anthony Knox. And since then, he's just really focused on his Greco and, you know, competed at U17 Worlds last year for Greco. He won the outright, won the world team spot. Um, I was a little surprised to see him registered for freestyle and not Greco, actually. So that's interesting. And then similarly, Corey Land, who is in college at this point, but uh, he was a 2019 Fargo Greco champ, uh, Fargo Greco champ and Fargo Freestyle finalist. So again, more of a Greco specialty. Uh, 2021, Fargo champ in Greco. 22, Fargo Freestyle champ. Um, but then in, as he got a little bit older, continued to still focus on the Greco path. Was eighth for uh, U17 Worlds in Greco. Um, second in 2021, U17 Worlds for Greco. But again, a guy that's trying to, you know, trying that hand in freestyle a little bit more. And then you talk about J.J. McComas. You know, we were just talking about Oklahoma State. Right now he's uh, number four at 132. And this time last year, he was getting ready for for uh, Fargo. And he ended up having a great Fargo run. Only lost one match. It was in the finals to Jax Forrest. And he gave Jax all he could handle. Jax was coming right. It was the year after he won, U- uh, took second at U17 Worlds. And J.J. was right there with him. And as we saw in other matches, you know, where they met at uh, Super 32. And I believe they met again at either Iron Man or uh, Beast of the East or Power Rated. One of those, they met at Super 32. I can't, I think it was Iron Man that they met up again. And both matches down to the wire. You know, J.J. McComas can go with these guys in freestyle. Yeah, he's an exciting recruit for Oki State, who's definitely rebuilding. I mean, as John Smith retires, you got the Coleman Scott era, and he is building a – they are building a force of a team with transfers, with potentially Wyatt Hendrickson coming in there. Honestly, like, I'm not trying to get ahead of ourselves, but they could arguably have a team that could rival Penn State next year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, okay. Talk about mad cow disease. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking crazy or anything right here, but just saying. No, I mean, it's it definitely is possible. Yeah. I'm looking looking forward to a video breakdown on that on Oklahoma State. Yeah, That's but where all the dust settles with everything. A little bit le- uh, less of a deep uh, pool here at 61, but yeah. uh, some top names nonetheless. Uh, 65, though, that one is loaded. It is insane. I know that Bo Bassett whether he wants to admit or not, has this date circled on his calendar for for months. Hey, this dude's getting up at 4.57 a.m. every single day. He posts it on Twitter. He loves training early, I guess. <laughs> he, though, I tell you, those Bishop McCourt guys are different. They really are putting in the work. And, you know, people will poo-poo them and they'll say, you know, they're, they're holdbacks or, you know, they're a private school wrestling in the public school division. Um, but they're doing the work that no one else is doing. And I, saw, doing- I saw a tweet. Or Zapata something. still beat him. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's like um, Zapata is meeting Bo at this tournament. Oh, like, you think it's a done deal? It's good. It's destined. I don't, I, I don't know if it's a exhibition. Done deal. I hey, think you got Bo's Ser- Ser- Sergio Lenley's in that weight class. Yeah, he is. This is, I'm looking forward to this weight. You have Bo Bassett, Daniel Zapata, Aiden Valencia, Colin Rath, Pearson Manville, um, Gabe, I always pronounce his name wrong, and he's a New yep. England guy. Uh, Boy, Boyosu, I yep. always pronounce his name wrong. Um, and Sergio Lemley are some of the big names that like stuck out to me. So obviously we know Bo, you know, was a world champion at U17, actually doubled up that year, made took both world spots at U17. Um, finalist at last chance qualifier where he beat, and I'm going to talk about him soon, is Aiden Valencia. He beat, uh, you know, Schnalti and uh, got attacked by Kolodzdik. Uh Fourth yeah. at uh, the World Team Trials in 2023 for U17, and then fourth at Fargo. Um feel like he's jumped again since then. Uh, How much has Zepeda jumped? Well, that's what we're going to talk about is, like, you know, Zepeda is – He's from California, bro. Put some respect yeah, was, to yeah. the best high school wrestling state, California. Two-time California state champ. Um, 
I think the big news before his who's number one victory was his Fargo finish where he took second in 2023. Um, he's currently ranked number one at 138. Uh, his big win over Bo Bassett at who's number one really, you know, kind of shook the wrestling world unless you live in California and you said, I, you know, I saw this coming a mile away, which, okay, possibly. Um, so I know that Bo and Daniel are probably both looking for this matchup to be exciting, but if anyone's going to throw a wrench in that finals, it's going to be Aiden Valencia, who is ranked right behind Bo. He's number two at 144, Bo number one. Um, and man, has Aiden done a lot. 2021 Greco World Team member, seventh at 2023 U.S. Uh, you know, Senior Nationals in the U.S. Uh, man, I'm all over the place. Seventh at last year's Senior Nationals. Um, no, seventh at the U.S. Open in the Senior Division. Eighth at Senior Nationals. He did both. Both um, Double dipped. Yeah, double dipped. He took fourth at the last chance qualifier, lost to Bo um, in a super close matchup. But he has international experience. I mean, this is a guy that took he, – he, he won gold at the uh, Henry de Glane in uh, Grand Prix in France, like at senior level. Like this is a guy that's doing huge things in freestyle. And I think he's going to bring it a ton. You know, I, I think a lot's going to change in that short time that we last saw him wrestle Bo. And uh, this could be a good rivalry for years to come. Um, I, but, I see it. Well, we saw Zipita. He's – He's committed to North Carolina State, State yeah. and I think along with Jax Forrest, Bo Bassett is another mega recruit. Interesting yep. to see where he, he ends up. Yeah. So. Um, also at NC State. <laughs> uh, they, 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 they did log jam before. Um, final few guys rounding up this weight. You got Colin Rath um, coming down. He's number three at 150. Uh, he Took second at the World Team Trials last year. Couldn't win out the two out of three. Um, another great wrestler from PA. Uh, you got Pearson Manville, who's actually competing right now uh, in Greco. If you know anything about the Manville family, besides just Pearson, the the two older brothers both wrestled for Penn State. Um, not him, though. No, not him. He's going to Arizona State. But great. Like, these guys just love to scrap. They are Constant All Americans in freestyle, constant All Americans in Greco, constant All Americans in folks. I like these guys are like, oh, big event this weekend, I'll be there. Big event tomorrow, I'll be there. Like they are not kind of picking and choosing. Like, oh, you know, I got to get ready for Super Thirty Two in six months. Like they're going six anywhere. Months. Yeah, they're going anywhere. They're competing, and while they're not always winning the bracket, they're always a, a finalist, top three, top four. Um, you know. Pearson Mandel was another guy that competed at the last chance qualifier. This is a guy that has senior level experience. I'm sure he's, and he's going to bring it in. Um, I think he just took, I think he's wrestling now for a third at the U uh, 20 Greco, you know, U S open. And uh, finally, before we talk about Sergio Lemley, we got Gabe Boy uh, Boyoso. Uh, if you're a new England guy out there watching this or listening to this, and you've seen this guy wrestle, you know, he is the real deal. Holyfield. Uh, he is a big point scorer. I watched him the first time. He was a <laughs> sophomore, and he just worked some guys that were, you know, incredible wrestlers from my area in in you know the New England finals. He just was beating down guys and then ran the course at nationals. Uh, he took third at you know last year's U seventeen World Team Trials. He was right there to make in the World Team spot. I think he's going to add a little interesting flavor to this. But uh, what do you guys think? How does Sergio Lemley kind of fit into this group? <clears throat> well, he, he, he was close to All-American at NCAAs this year, and he traded matches with Brock Hardy. I think he's right in the mix to be a title contender. If he can translate that over to freestyle, I don't see any reason why he couldn't. So... Yeah, I think it'll be definitely be interesting. He yeah. could definitely do some damage. I mean, I'd like to think so. He's the oldest guy in the bracket. Like, yeah, should be fun. I'm, I'm, I got sixty five and fifty seven. I'm circling that on my, you know, on my calendar. Um, yeah, definitely. Seventy uh, kilos. Seven, well, yeah. So seventy kilos. 
Before you say P.J. Duke is a foregone conclusion, Cannon Webster, okay, yeah. he registered oh for Illinois this year, okay, he was 16-1. and one. His only loss of the year came to Ty Waters, who we know, I think, took fourth place at NCAA uh, to, uh, from West Virginia. He lost to him 4-2. He, uh, let's see, who, who did he beat? Who did he beat? He beat Caleb Rocci from Iowa. Uh, I'm looking at this list. Corbin Munson. Oh, he beat Dylan DeMalio, four to one. Uh, so and I see on your list here, Mike. He beat a uh, Mr. Jesse Mendez at the U.S. Open last year. Yeah, and what has Jesse Mendez done? Just dominate the the freestyle field. Yeah, sir. He gave Zane the closest match of his tournament. Yeah. If he is anywhere near the same level he was, you know, if him and Jesse have kind of jumped levels simultaneously, this is going to be a really interesting matchup for him because I've never seen PJ Duke get dominated. I've seen him put beat the brakes off guys since he was a little kid. Um, and I feel like if this Cannon Webster can maintain the level that he had and just keep progressing like we expect him to, this is going to be a really interesting finals. Um, you know, PJ Duke had a pretty big win at the uh, the Journeyman World Classic. I actually texted a few people to be like, oh, big day for Penn State fans and big day for guys in our area. PJ Duke, you know, was a Empire Wrestling Academy guy and wrestles for KD Train now, still relatively local. Um, but he won by pin, was winning by points before he pinned the guy, but won by pin over the reigning 2023 U-17 bronze world medalist uh, from Germany. And there was never a doubt that, like, PJ was going to win the match. Like, he was very much in control, up on points, and then just nail and coffin, pins him at the end. Um, injuries have kind of derailed his career as far as, like, taking time off, um, having to miss events like Super 32, New York State Championships, World Team Trials. Um, but when he wrestles and he's able to go, he is lights out. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. I think these are the two guys that I could see really at the top of the list. But uh, you got other guys like Cooper Hilton, Lynn Robodeau, both of which third and fifth at, uh, at last year's World Team Trials. Um, so they're right behind. Uh, so this could be this could be pretty interesting. 74 kilos, Mr. Joe Seeley leads the charge. But you got, you know, we saw Marcus Blaze last weekend, coached by his brother Joey Blaze. Now it's yeah. Joey Blaze's turn to show out his freestyle. And well, what uh, about freaking Lockett? Yeah, well, that's Darian Lockett he, as well. Yeah. You know, he texted freaking Meyer. He teched Meyer? Like, what? Reigning world champion Meyer Shapiro texts him. Yeah, the guy that took third at NCAAs. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I don't know if Meyer didn't look like Lockett's going there. to uh, Okie State, right? Yeah, I'm telling you right now. Okie State team time, is going to be filthy. You, no, I'm saying the next time Penn State loses a national title, it's going to be to Oklahoma State. You're I, not mark wrong. my word. Mark my cow brain word words right now. That's what's going to happen. You're not wrong. Um, I think something was wrong with Meyer. I think he was outscored twenty to one or twenty two to two at uh at the world team trial at the Olympic trials, um, which is super unlike a you know a reigning world champion to do. Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know was his his shtick there, but you know Ladarian Lockett was a world champ in twenty seventeen. I mean, not 20, in 2023, he was a U-17 world champ in 2023. He follows that up by being, you know, a top guy at the senior level now. You know, beating the brakes off Meyer. He's uh, he's ranked third at 165. The guy right above him at number two, Joe Seeley, uh, 2022 world champ. Um, you know, third at last year's world team trials, Fargo champ eighth at senior nationals. I mean, this is a guy that has senior level experience should be interesting. And then you add someone like, uh, you know, Bo 
I know he's messed up his last name. Antonona. Um, hey, he, he he wrestled in some mat in do some yeah. for Michigan. Yeah. He, he only lost to Mikey Caliendo nine to four in the duel. Yeah, these young guys, man. I'm telling you, these young guys are crazy. And he pinned Caleb Fish. Yeah. Um, you know, multiple time Fargo All American freestyle, Fargo finalist, uh, world team member in 2017. For uh, again, tw- did it again. U17 world team member in 2021. Um, I think these guys are my top three for doing some damage. Uh, if Ladarian Lockett can wrestle the same way that he did against Meyer, I think he'll win the bracket, um, which will shake up the, you know, 165 folk style rankings a little bit. But uh, I'm interested to see how Joey Blaze kind of navigates his field. He has some pretty big upset potential. I know Mike's picked him before in, uh, you know, other matches that he's talked about. So that's because he does have the upset. Potential. Yeah. Really. Blaze bros. They just know how to, they live for the upset. They certainly do. I'm just in their minds. It's not even an upset. It's a foregone conclusion. Exactly. I'm just looking at like back to back to back weight classes, PJ Duke, Penn State commit, Joe Seeley, Penn State commit. And then as we talked about 79 kilos, Zach Ryder, Penn State as well. And, and Will Henkel. Henkel. Will Henkel's in the same weight. Um, I think, in my opinion, this is Zach Ryder's to lose. Um, you know, Zach was a uh, is two-time U17 World Bronze past two seasons. Uh, decided to forgo his senior year to train exclusively at State College with the NLWC. Um, haven't seen him compete since then. I think we're going to see some big stuff. I believe he's cutting down for this weight as well. So he's probably going to be on the bigger side. Well, uh, you know, Will Henkel, you know, I love Will. The last time I talked to him, he was a little bit thinner. Uh, he, he's, you know, tall as all heck, and he's going to fill out well. I just think he's a little small for 175 maybe right now. Um, but Will had a big journeyman world classic as well. He, uh, you know, he was the champion over another top guy. Um, he, in the finals, beat the uh, U17 11th. So the guy that took 11th at, at Worlds, you know, Will beat him. Uh, Will was a Fargo champion, 21, number four right now at 175. I think he's looking really good. But I can't believe you left off um, the real future champ at 79 kilos, a cactus wrestling trained wrestler himself, <laughs> a Mr. Zaire McLean Felix. Yeah, how is registered? That I haven't for talked 79 to 79 kilos for Spartan combat for now. Mike yeah. coached him in high school. Good luck yeah, to him. Good luck to Zaire. Well, good luck, Zaire. Zaire. I haven't seen him. I saw him in town like a while ago, and I was like, don't let anyone know I'm here. I'm not supposed to be back in town. Like, I was like, try not to see people. Um, in, in, he kept, uh, I, I saw him this past season when he was home from winter break. I didn't see him, I don't think. In all seriousness, there's a guy, I think, uh, for Cornell, Simon Ruiz, mm-hmm. who is definitely going to be one to look out for. Um, he His only loss in his freestyle season, or sorry, in his redshirt season, was to Mr. Rocco Welsh, and it was an overtime loss, 4-1. to one. And he also beat Lennox Wallach, who All-American for Columbia. So he's also registered at this weight. And Wallach already transferred. <laughs> yep, Wallach transferred. And then um, some other guys, M- MJ Guyton, I-, I see from... You don't think Guyton's going to go on a run? He's pretty big for this. Uh, he might be. He could. He- he's got that big move potential as well. I mean, he gave Kennedy about all he could handle. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of uh, current college guys that could. I see Noel Mulvaney also registered for this. He's uh, Bucknell National Qualifier, same high school as Mitchell Messenbrink and Keegan O'Toole. So, Good wrestlers over there. It's going to be interesting. Um, a lot of AWA guys registered for this. Yeah, I was asking. I mean, I think that's we're seeing a lot more like high school age guys really commit to the freestyle path. And, uh, and we'll talk about some AWA guys in a second, actually. Well, that's a perfect segue. Mr. Aiden Sinclair, uh, Missouri commit, and uh, he's a big one. Is he planning to go 84 or 97? 
Uh, it might be 84. 84 um, probably to start at least. I mean, he, I mean, he's 86 is just 190, so he's perfectly between the two. Yeah, he'll probably go down. That would make sense. But, uh, you know, Sinclair, number one at 190, um, eighth at the uh, 2023 U-17 World Championship. Uh, great wrestler. He's beaten the Mir- – you know, um, he's beaten Conor Mirasola, who is another great wrestler in his own right, um, at who's number one he beat him. These Ashton Wrestling Academy guys, they don't play around. They are really making big strides, and I think it's going to be the premier club that we're seeing in, in uh, NCAAs. But I would be foregone to not mention some of the other guys here. This is a weight actually that has a lot of uh, college talent. Um, some big names like, you know, Jersey Rob, Ryder Rogotsky, Tate uh, Nagat, uh, Nagdeborn. Max no. McNally, who uh, – Yeah, yep, yep. Red, red shirt from Minnesota, beat the likes of Aaron Azarov from Columbia and Brian Saldano of Rutgers this year. Undefeated 12 12- – or 15 and 0 in his redshirt season for Minnesota. Yeah, redshirt year. Also a bronze medalist at a 2022's U17 World Championship. So this is a guy that, you know, he's he's no stranger to this kind of wrestling style. Um I'm going to lean toward a two-man matchup between uh Sinclair and uh McAnally. I think that um you know, while there's good wrestlers especially some of the college guys that we've named. rogatsky has got the upset potential. Yeah. He definitely has big moves in him. I just don't know if it'll be enough to beat some of these other guys. That's fair. Um, Cade Ziola is another guy that is mentioned as well. Again, good wrestler, ranked sixth, but I think his freestyle experience, kind of like we talked with some of the smaller guys, is is a little limited. Um, as far as I know, he was only a one-time All-American in Fargo in 2022, um, which is not, not you know nothing to shake a stick at. If you're a Fargo All-American, that's amazing. I just think that there's levels to this, like we've seen, um, and I don't know if it'll be enough to help him crack through the 86 kilo field. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Uh, 92 kilos. We were just mentioning him. Connor Mirasola, Penn State commit. He took down Aaron Brooks, who's an Olympian. Pretty, pretty good. First person to take down Aaron Brooks in months. Yeah. No one, Brooks no went the whole one, college season without giving yeah. a touchdown. Whole college season. Um, you know, Connor Mirasola, like I said, number two right now at 190, right behind Aiden Sinclair, who's his off-season teammate at AWA, uh, Mir Sola, Fargo champ, second at who's number one, fourth at 2023 Senior Nationals. Not the best showing at the Olympic trials going one and two, with his second loss being to Max Dean, who he had previously beaten. Um, so not not the best there, but looking to you know bounce back for um, you know U20s. But uh, there's some guys that are going to stand in his way. Uh, you got. Carson Tompkins, so he's number three at 190, um, fourth at Fargo in 2023, third at the 2023 U.S. Open, a really great Fargo wrestler, I mean a freestyle wrestler. Uh, But I think the big name here is going to be Gavin Nelson from Minnesota. Um, So Gavin, college accolades aside, and he had a great redshirt year, or true freshman year, I believe, actually. He he redshirted last year. Okay. Fourteen and eight. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking um, uh, at 197. Yep. Uh, but he was, you know, Gavin Nelson, uh, world placer. He uh, lost in the bronze medal match to take fifth in 2021 at U17 Worlds. But uh, there's some other, you know, bigger names in this. Uh, Sunny. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see how Sonny Sasso does. Younger brother of uh, Sammy Sasso. Um, who's a Virginia Tech wrestler. Uh, there's some other pretty, you know, solid college guys, but I'm leaning kind of towards a Gavin Nelson, Connor Mirasola matchup. But um, that doesn't mean it's guaranteed, you know, how, how these things happen. Someone might be ready to make a name for themselves. Oh, yeah. I, it's it's possible. 
yeah, one of the the I guess less deep weight classes. Um, ninety seven kilos. Camden McDaniel, uh, Cole Mirasola are kind of the headliners. Where where is Camden McDaniel? Is he uh, committed? Anyway, he goes to um. Where does he go? He is already in college, I believe. I thought he was at um. Unless he took a, a gap year. No, he's going to uh the he's at Nebraska. Okay. He uh he redshirted, I believe, at Nebraska at Nebraska. Um pretty impressive resume in itself. Uh you know, he is a bronze medalist at uh at U twenty worlds last year. So in the same age group, he's just got one more year of it. Um he had a you know, I believe it was with Steve Burrell, who's another guy in this weight that's kind of someone to keep an eye on. Um, you know, Steve Burrell and uh, McDaniel, they met last year as well. Uh, I believe they had three matches on the way to the uh, U-20 world teams. And you, uh, McDaniel, what's do you, up? Do you think both Mirasolas are going to find a, a way into the Penn State lineup? Immediately or or eventually? In general. Yes, I, I think they do. I think that the team has a lot of talent, and I think that they're doing it smart, trying to get uh, like Cole to continue to grow and letting Connor like kind of just stay where he's at for now. Um, I'm sure that the Penn State coaching staff will figure this out better than I could. Um, well, what other option is there besides 97 and heavyweight? There isn't. <laughs> make, an, make another weight class. Add another yeah. one. Get these guys in there. Get to 11. Have one of them transfer out and then ha go the same weight. Good yeah. Way. We've seen we, we've seen some, you know, pretty talented guys come into Penn State and and not stay there, but we'll see. We've seen some pretty talented guys come to Penn State and not do as well as they had. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, Colt. I would say uh, Cole's, you know, good freestyle wrestler as well, you know, competing at the senior level. Maybe not the accolades his, his twin brother has, but, you know, number three at 285, uh, second at Fargo last year to uh, Aiden Atau, uh fourth at the last chance qualifier, some good senior level wins. Um, but I don't know if he's at the level yet to compete with, like, McDaniel and, uh, and maybe Steve Burrell, but... I could see maybe I could see a second place for him. It'll be interesting to see how he stacks up though with some of these bigger guys. For sure. And rounding it out, Coy Hopke, he's a big, big recruit. Huge. For Minnesota. Minnesota's got a lot of the upper weights. Oh, Minnesota yeah, they, always does well with the upper weights. Heavyweight you. I mean, they were for a long time. I think they're trying to bring it back. Um Yeah. But yeah, there's some there's some talented college guys in this weight already. Uh, Jimmy Mullen, I think, is set for G yeah. Attack currently. Yes, and um, Aiden Atau is at uh, and I'm probably pronouncing his last name right. It might be Atau, but he's at uh, Oregon State. I think he actually just won tonight at the U.S. Open the uh, the U20 Greco title, and I think he's looking to double up. Um, I believe those two are in college already. Uh, Koi Hopke, huge recruit, gold, you know, won the uh, 2022 gold medal at U17 Worlds, doubled down and said, hey, I'm, I'm on the Greco team as well. Took eighth, at, still good, but, um, you know, this is a guy that, that likes to wrestle and he, and he brings it. Uh, number five right now at 285. Crazy that folk style isn't his best ability, considering that his is, you know, international levels of success already. But you know, you have. And I'm curious if Jimmy Mullen's actually going to wrestle for Virginia Tech because I know he, he's trying to do football as well, and I think it's tough for some of these guys to to do both, especially those upper weights where you you're know, not all Nash. Yeah, and even that, you know, Nash is still not having the maybe career that you would have expected out of a high schooler as a high school wrestler, um, you know, it's the same thing that we're going to see with Iowa. I don't know if, uh, Ben Keeter. 
yeah, I just I don't know if he'll continue to do both. I think it's going to be tough. And once he starts getting close to that NFL dream, it might kind of shift the tides away from wrestling. Um, but, uh, you know, Jimmy Mullen in 21 took uh, second at uh, U-17 Worlds. Um, same thing. Another guy just like Koi Hopke doubled down. He uh, took fifth in Greco at U-17 Worlds in 21. Um Aiden Natal, again, more of a Greco specialist. But, you know, we'll see if he gets it done in folk style. This is a guy that has previously won big events. I mean, he teched uh, Cole Mirasola, I believe it was, in uh, in Fargo in 2023 in the freestyle finals. Um, so even though it's not his best style, he's still very dominant in it. And uh, so he'd be the favorite at uh, 97 kilos. Yeah, I just don't think he's making that. <laughs> it's but, crazy uh, when you look at this list this is definitely the future top wrestlers in the game like yeah i mean if you look the, usually the freestyle world championships are kind of a good indicator for folk style college success as we've seen in the case of a guy like mitchell bessenbrink and maya shapiro and keegan o'toole second, third yeah yeah and so um these are Soon to be household names if you don't know them already. So make sure you, you check out them this upcoming weekend and follow along. Uh, very exciting for the sport of wrestling, watching them compete. Oh, yeah. So let us know your thoughts about U20s in the comments down below. Who are you most excited to watch or follow? And... Uh, let us know what you think down below. Thanks for watching. We are Cactus Wrestling, and we'll see you next time on our next video.